Hi guys! In this video, we'll be looking at ideal gas equation on molar gas constant, ideal gas equation on molar mass, and then we'll finish with a summary. We're first going to define the ideal gas equation, and to do that we need to know about something called the molar gas constant. We've already seen that the gradient of a pressure times volume against temperature graph for an ideal gas is directly proportional to the number of molecules in the gas. Remember that if we plot pressure times volume on the y-axis, which is going to have units of pascals times meters cubed, and we put temperature on the x-axis in units of Kelvin. And this graph is going to be a straight line through the origin. Now let's think about the gradient of this graph. It's going to be equal to the change in y, which we know is delta PV, divided by the change in x, which we know to be delta T. So our gradient is delta PV divided by delta T. And we know that this gradient is proportional to n, which is the symbol we give to the number of moles. We're now going to think about the constant of proportionality between the gradient of a pressure volume against temperature graph and the number of moles in the gas. It turns out that it's the same for every ideal gas. So our gradient that's proportional to n, we can say that the gradient is equal to the constant of proportionality r, times the number of moles n, and this is the case for every ideal gas. The constant of proportionality is a number called the molar gas constant, r, and the value of r is 8.31, and its units are joules per moles per kelvin. We already know that we can state the combined gas law in terms of a generic constant, and our combined gas law is pressure times volume divided by temperature is equal to a constant. And we can rearrange this equation to give it in another form of pressure times volume is equal to a constant times temperature. Now this constant is actually the gradient of the pressure volume against temperature graph, which we can express in terms of the number of moles and the molar gas constant. So we know that the gradient of this graph is equal to n times r. And this means we can rewrite the combined gas law as pressure times volume is equal to n times r times t, where we've replaced our generic constant with this. This equation is known as the ideal gas equation, and let's write it out in full here. We have pressure in units of pascals times volume in units of meters cubed being equal to the number of moles, which has units of moles, multiplied by the molar gas constant, which has units of joules per mole per kelvin, and finally multiplied by temperature, which has units of kelvin. And this equation is also known as the equation of state of an ideal gas. For example, we can use the ideal gas equation to estimate the number of moles of air molecules in a room of dimensions three meters by three meters by three meters. So that means that the height of the room is three meters and the length and the width of the room are also three meters. And we want to find the number of moles in this volume here. We're going to assume that the room is at a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius and at standard atmospheric pressure of 101 kilopascals. First of all, we want to rearrange the ideal gas equation to be in terms of moles of gas. So remember our ideal gas equation? To rearrange this in terms of moles, we need to divide both sides by the molar gas constant times temperature, which gives us n for the number of moles is equal to pressure times volume divided by the molar gas constant times temperature. Now we can find the volume of the room from its dimensions and also find its temperature in Kelvin, so that we know that the volume of the room is equal to 3 times 3 times 3 meters cubed, which is 27 meters cubed. And we were also told that the temperature was 25 degrees Celsius. And to transform this into Kelvin, remember that we need to add 273.15. And this gives us a temperature of 298.15 Kelvin. And substituting these values into the equation gives us the number of moles of gas molecules. So we have N is equal to the pressure, which is 101 kilopascals times the volume, which is 27 meters cubed, divided by the molar gas constant, which recall is 8.31 joules 
per mole per Kelvin. And then finally we need to multiply by the temperature, which is 298.15 Kelvin. And this gives us an answer for N of 1100.6501 moles. And rounding this to two significant figures, we get that N is 1100 moles. We're going to talk about how we can use the ideal gas equation and molar mass in calculations. When we find the number of moles in a gas, we're finding the number of molecules in the gas in terms of Avogadro's constant. Remember that if we say we have, for example, two moles of a certain substance, we're saying that we have two times Avogadro's constant molecules of that substance. And this is two times 6.022 times 10 to the 23 molecules, because this number is Avogadro's constant Na. Now, if we know the type of molecule making up the gas, we can now use this information to find the mass of the gas in the room. So if we know the type of molecule, because we know the mass of one molecule, we can then find the total mass. Recall that every element has a known molar mass, which is the mass of one mole of that element. For example, the molar mass of one atom of nitrogen is given in the periodic table as 14 grams per mole, which is the molar mass of nitrogen. For example, if we know the number of moles of gas in a room is 1,100 mole, and we know the type of gas molecule, we can estimate the total mass of gas in a room. So we know that in this room, there are 1,100 moles of gas. Now you probably know that air is formed of a mixture of gases, but to make our problem easier, we're going to use the fact that air is mostly composed of nitrogen molecules, N2. So we make the approximation that all of the air in the room is pure nitrogen gas. In actual fact, it's about 78% nitrogen, but for our purposes, we can assume that it's all nitrogen molecules. So we therefore assume that the molar mass of molecules in air is generally that of nitrogen, which is 0.028 kilograms per mole. So we assume that the molar mass of molecules in air is approximately equal to 0.028 kilograms per mole. And now we're able to find an estimate of the mass of gas in the room. We know that the number of moles n is equal to 1,100 moles. And we know that mass is equal to n, the number of moles, times the molar mass of the substance. And let's substitute in our values. So we have mass is equal to 1,100 mole times 0 0.028 kilograms per mole. And if we calculate this, we get that the mass is 30.8 kilograms, which is 31 kilograms to two significant figures. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level physics resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap reply smiley face and together let's make A-level physics a walk in the park.